David, so is something preventing you from achieving your goals? Yes. What interferes with your happiness? So many things. Ugh. Well, check this out, bro. You should probably check out BetterHelp.com. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and it connects in a safe and private online environment, and it's so convenient. I love better help and my friends just for you guys who don't know out there sometimes you might feel a little uncomfortable uh, meeting somebody face to face well guess what you could do it all online you could even do it through your phone with the better help app it's a uh, Amazing, my friends, and I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at BetterHelp.com slash foods. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. Welcome back to Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim Chantarangsu. And I'm a Kim Jong-un. Annyeong. Haseo, everybody out there. In Japan, die. <laughs> Korea, South Korea, die. <laughs> North Korea, live a poor ever. Uh, wait, when was the last time you were in Korea? Uh, last time I was in Korea, I was 14 years old, and that's when I got the, uh, the, the food poisoning from KFC. Really? Yeah. Oh, you went to a KFC you know what, in Korea. Yeah. <laughs> out of all the things I could have eaten... Yeah, because I used to love KFC before I had the food poisoning, mm-hmm. and now when I even when I'm around KFC, it makes me sick. Nothing wrong with the company; it's just I somehow got food poisoning. From yeah, it. yeah, your body just kind of uh, you know it goes back. You have PTS, you have KFC PTSD. I have KFC <laughs> PTSD. You know, it's crazy that you say that. Is um in Thailand, there's like a KFC on every block. They love KFC out there. Hey, do you know about this? I heard in Thailand that you need a college degree to work at McDonald's. What? Yeah, you actually need a certain level of education to work at McDonald's, and it's actually a decent paying job. I've never heard that. If you're in Thai land, land, (laughs) let me know if that's true. But I heard like you have a decent living wage out there if you work, like if you work at a McDonald's, it's like, hey, you're doing pretty good. Really? Ma, I don't know. I'll ask somebody. You know nothing about your people, dude. I don't. All I know is pad thai and transgender beautiful <laughs> prostitutes. <laughs> Eating pad thai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Did you ever go to the ping pong show The where they boop? I'll tell you what. I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to experience a ping pong show. Um, I thought that was a joke. It's real. No, it's completely real. Yeah. Um. And but even okay. So I was out there. Um, you ever heard of Titanium? No. Titanium is a Thai rap group. Well, like some of the guys are from New York. There's like the, and they're popping. They have like. Oh, so actual. I thought you were making a joke. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's an actual rap group, and um, and they they got they got like they're pretty popping out there. Okay, and um, so one of the guys, Way, his mom is actually. Uh, was friends with my mom when they were younger or something like that. Our moms know oh, each other. Oh shit! So me and I, 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 I've been on a remix of one of their songs years ago. And um, when I was in Thailand, I hit up somebody that either was with them or knew somebody. I was like, "Hey, what's, what's up with a ping pong show?" And they were like, "Oh man, I don't know if you want to do that. Like the area is really like seedy apparently when you go because mm-hmm. it's like it'll be in the red light district, but I guess it's like for the ping pong show, it's kind of like the." the the deeper parts of the red light district, you know, and someone's like, ah, man, nah, man, maybe, maybe, maybe not. And I was like, oh, all right, well, damn, well, shit, all right. Yeah, if a local saying that's like, oh shit. Yeah, and um, I was talking to somebody who recently went, I forget who, I'm sorry, but they were telling me that like when you go, you know, you sit down, like someone kind of takes you down a, a like a, into a little, a little like wherever it's at, and it feels weird, but then like. There and when they went, there was no one there. And then people start coming out doing weird. Like one girl came out and she like signed a piece of. She put the pen in her cooch and like signed her name on a piece of paper. Um, and then different acts start happening on stage. And uh, they were like, okay, well, let's get out of here. I don't, I don't want to stay too long. And they don't know that they charge you per act that goes on stage. So they'll be like, oh, come in for free, but then. You know, you have to get like a two drink minimum or whatever. So they might get a couple Pepsis or some waters if they don't want to drink. But then the more acts come on stage, they're charging you for that. Oh, shit. So they they're didn't charging know. like American prices, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the bills are coming out. It's like, I don't know, like 200 bucks. And you're like, what the fuck? I didn't even buy anything. I could feed a whole village in Thailand, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the hell? It's crazy. So, um, but yes, I've heard some crazy shit. Uh, I heard, I think Rihanna tweeted 
she was live tweeting one time when she went to a ping pong show and she was like, this girl pulled a live bird out of her cooch and it <gasps> like fucking flew. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit like that. And that was the fucking motivation behind her hit single. Umbrella. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nah, but uh, yeah, I guess it gets pretty wild. It's it's more than just shooting ping pongs out of their cooches. It's uh, yeah. it's a lot more, you know. And apparently, it's it pretty crazy. I've always, I mean, I've been curious. I part of me feels like you know, I'm Thai. I should experience this for once. I, I've always wanted to go to Thailand. I've I, first of all, I heard I'm a giant there. Like if I'm there, I'm like substantially bigger than everybody else. It, it depends, cause my uncle, um, my my mom's brother is like, how tall are you? Six one. He might be like 5'11". Like, he's a tall dude as okay. well. Um, so, it, you know, it depends. But, yeah, majority, I don't remember a lot of tall people. when I was though. in Japan, I was substantially larger than everybody else. And they're like, Godzilla! <laughs> <laughs> no, they were like, dirty Korean. <laughs> Get out of my country. Damn, next time you go to Japan, let me know, because I'm trying to go, dog. You would love it. All the clothes would fit you. <sighs> None of the clothes fit me over there. <laughs> like, it's just damn near. Even if I, lo- I lost, like, what, 70 pounds? Yeah. Still can't fit the clothes. Right, because I mean, you're even like European. I feel like European Asian sizes, they're like size I'm down. I'm a quadruple XL <laughs> over there. I would. I need to get rid of a shit ton of my clothes, and I was like vlogging. I'm like, all right, guys, I might have like a garage sale, so all my small, medium, uh, eight and a half to nine sizes shoes out there, guys, come through. <laughs> I don't. I I'm, I literally can't fit. So if you guys go to Japan, right? There's obviously there's different areas in Japan, just like you know any country. <clears throat> but I think like first timers should always go to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Because number one, the food is the best there. Mm. It's like any metropolitan city. You're gonna have the best chefs there. Everybody goes there to live in the city. Uh, the food is fucking amazing. It's almost damn near hard to get terrible food in Tokyo. Mm. And there's like, oh, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then it goes from that to whatever's amazing after that. So if you guys don't know, one of the places that I fucking hate in this in this uh, country, the United States, fast food mm. is, is American Yoshinoya. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I've ever been to Yoshinoya. You don't have to. Okay. And you know what? Mr. Dorito guy, you probably like it. <laughs> so I've had Yoshinoya twice here. Uh-huh. Gave me diarrhea twice. Really? And I don't just get diarrhea super easy. Yeah. I make jokes about it, but you know, when you're a big boy, you, you know, you, you can handle a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. The Yoshinoya in Japan is completely different. Mm. It's like yakiniku bowls, which is um, beef bowls, mm. you know, with the sweet soy and the onions and mm. sometimes with eggs, oyakudon or whatever, whatnot. That's the chicken version of it. Mm-hmm. But it, it's like what you can get at a restaurant, but it's oh, fast Oh, word. Food. Really? It's that fucking good. Like when I went to Yoshino, everybody's like, you should, you have to eat Yoshino in Japan. Really? I'm like, I fucking hate Yoshino. It's probably where it originated. It's huh? where it originated. But oh. the American version is, it's, it's completely different. Like the... The the beef bowls that they have there is like stuff that I would pay like seventeen bucks for at a restaurant over here, but it's their fast food. Damn, it's fucking delicious, dude. Let me ask you this: Did you go to that horse sashimi spot? I so here's the funny thing: so I was actually with uh, a couple of people from JK, yeah, and we went to go eat uh, Japanese barbecue, uh-huh. and I was sitting there, and we're like, damn, this place is fucking fire! Like it smells so good. I'm sitting, there, I'm like, that's a fucking Dude, Japanese cows look so weird. Ah. And so we're just sitting there, and then we get a platter of stuff. And I'm looking at this diagram, and I'm like, that's a horse. You didn't even know you were there? No, we already sat down. Whoa. And I'm like, that's a fucking horse. We're going to eat horse right now. I had oh. no idea. But I heard, like, <clears throat> I've heard good things about horse. So if you guys also don't know, in Mongolia, like, one of their main staple proteins is, like, horse. My okay. friend uh, did missionary work over there. And when he was there, <clears throat> he said Mongolian people regularly eat horse. But in Japan... They also eat horse. They have like horse barbecue spots, like Korean barbecue. Oh, word. Probably one of the best <laughs> meals I've ever had. Really? I actually ate raw raw uh, horse face fat. Oh. So they like shave off from like the bridge of the nose or something like that. Uh-huh. And there's like face fat there and you eat that shit raw and I ate it. Word. It was actually really fucking good. I mean, one of my favorite cuts of meat when I go to the taco <laughs> when I go to the taco truck is the cabeza meat, which is just like it's it's literally like this area. The whole yeah. face, they just like it's the T zone. Yeah, you know? <laughs> the, the oily T zone. <laughs> Can I get the oily T zone of the cow, please? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's so interesting. I feel like if I went to if someone offered me horse barbecue in Japan, I would say nay. He only answered that question so he could make that joke. Yes, because I'm lying. I would totally be down. Yeah, you would fucking eat. And you know what? You would love it. And the funny thing is, Japanese people are probably, I mean, 
despite their war transgressions, we're talking about now. <laughs> all yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, this is coming from a Korean man. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'm okay. But <laughs> they, uh, they are so the customer service level is fucking unreal. Mm. I was at a, a Adidas Japan, right? Because they first of all, the Adidas in Japan, the clothing is amazing. Yeah, it's fucking dope. Like they have all their uh, collabs with like neighborhood, you know, Y three or whatever, whatnot, mm-hmm. right? It amazing. I go there. I actually leave my vlogging camera in the store. Mm. I walk out. I don't even know I have my camera. Suddenly, I hear <laughs> this motherfucker is bolting at me. Like like he's about to pass a baton and I have to grab it and run. <laughs> He, I left my camera and he ran full speed to Damn. make sure I got my camera back. How nice. In the United States, that fool would have started a vlogging channel with my gear. A hundred percent. With half of your footage. With half my footage. All my B-roll. It's like, that's me in there, guy. At the at the horse restaurant, they couldn't speak English. Yeah. Like any bit of English. Mm-hmm. That's not their fault. We right. are in your country. Yeah. We should know how to speak Japanese right, a right, little right. bit or something, how to communicate. This woman, I thought her neck was going to fall off for how many times she bowed and apologized to us. Aww. She's like, so, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm like, you don't have to apologize. Yeah. We'll, we'll just point at pictures. It's okay. It's right, okay. right, but right. But we don't even – I could at that point, I could – I could understand Japanese at like a first grade level. Yeah. But I couldn't speak it anymore. Because mm. I, I took Japanese for four years and mm-hmm. I studied after. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mariel wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So I understood what she was saying to me, but I couldn't speak it. So I mm. felt so bad. So we spoken to a translator. Right. Basically said, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay. Yeah. It is okay. Stop <laughs> bowing. Stop making this weird. <laughs> yeah. But they, their service level is so high level they're mm. hyper apologetic and i heard like it's like that in south korea too but really? I, I haven't been since i was like 14. man man you know like before the pandemic literally like tokyo was on my like list i was like babe we're going to oh tokyo. you would love it oh I, I you know just like the trap like the food and the fashion and like the weird sex shit i just want to try it all <laughs> <laughs> so there's this place called um the Sukiji uh, fish market, right? Okay. And that's where you see all the tuna, all this live, and they, 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 do, they do tours in there. So I heard about this, but I wasn't sure if it's real, and mm. I'm still not sure if it is, but they said that there's a lot of uh, like Yakuza that still runs that stuff. Mm. But the funny thing is our tour lady, super fucking sweet, but uh, I had my camera, right? And she goes, oh, before you uh, do video stuff, um, certain people would ask, would like for you to ask, mm. right? If you could take a photo or whatever, whatnot, mm. right? So in that fish market area, she let the people know, oh, like we have some tourists here. Would you mind if they could take photos? Everybody was like down mm-hmm. except for this one guy, but he didn't say anything because mm. she asked everybody very politely in the Japanese way. You know, she brought out a sword. She put it to her stomach. No, <laughs> <laughs> but she asked everybody. And this guy, as I bring the camera up, he goes, no, <laughs> no photo. <laughs> like. By the way, I exaggerate a lot of things. This is this I'm under exaggerating right now. This little Japanese man, we had like this little fucking fish cleaver and he just made a cross sign like this. What? No fall! No fall! Just screaming at me. And I'm like, I didn't even lift my camera to shoot. It was just on me. Yeah. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And then she starts playing to the man, like calming him down. And then I asked her, I was like, oh, did I do something really disrespectful? Yeah. She looks at me, she goes, you know, sometimes. He's just a mean. <laughs> <laughs> He's so rude. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, so it's not me, it's him. You know what I mean? Because I thought I did something super disrespectful. It's yeah. not my country. I don't know what's going on. Oh. She said, I that pause. She was like trying to be super polite. She goes, He's so rude. <laughs> he do that every day. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we hooked up three years ago, <laughs> and he always wanted this a pussy. I told him no more. <laughs> now he's sabotaging my tour. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm a kick at his ass. <laughs> yeah, she was so upset at the guy. Uh, and I realized my Japanese accent came off kind of Italian right now. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's a such a pussy. Uh. <laughs> he sabotaged my tour. <laughs> <laughs> but that lady is so sweet. Customer service is great there. The food is great. Yeah. And obviously you can go to different places, but Tokyo I feel like is a must. If you go to the fashion district, clothing is fire. Everything that we think is cool here has been there for three or four years. Right, right. We're, like the United States is always behind fashion. For sure. And it's it kind of sucks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like I remember at the time when we went to Japan, um, the 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 color palette was 
earth tones, mm-hmm. right? But America hadn't caught up to that shit mm-hmm, yet. Mm-hmm. Like the like for example, just the the olive green, mm-hmm. the the you know all that other shit, mm-hmm. earth tone shit. And I just remember walking around, everybody was wearing that stuff. Well, when I was wearing in the United States, just because you know I love Japan shit, you know whatever. One as an Asian person, everybody kind of brings that over a little earlier. Mm-hmm. People didn't get it; they thought it was like you know people wearing the bright the bright colored shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Japan, it was already popping. Two years later, everybody's wearing that shit, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, I told you, motherfuckers, Kanye. Kanye shit. <laughs> I saw actually saw all of Kanye's line there in Japan. There was a whole row of it. Where two thousand dollar jackets. Damn man, I need to go, and you need to go to Thailand. We'll just we'll figure it out, bro. Next time you go to Japan, let me know. Next time I go to Thailand, I'll let you know. <clears throat> you should go to Thailand and just watch a Muay Thai match. I heard they're fucking nuts. I would love to. Um, yeah, because also because I feel like it's such a big part of the culture that I have yet to experience in Thailand. You know, um, Thailand, right? Same shit where. Um, it's kind of really hard to find bad food if you're going to like just local spots. You know, it's all pretty fire. I always tell people, I'm like, look, yes, you will probably get diarrhea at some point during your trip if you're eating from like the food carts and like the, the little stands and shit. But it's like the best food from these little carts. You know what I'm saying? It's, of course, it's not. They're trying to regulate it more. Um, but like. It was so, it's always so bomb. Like you could literally, bro, like my dad, I'd be at my, my my grandma's house and my dad would be like, I'm hungry, let's go for a walk. <clears throat> and there would just be like a little fucking cart of someone making noodles, bro. Five dollars. You know, no, no, like back then it was even, oh, it was way less. Probably way less than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then it was like. A uh, couple bucks. Like, yeah, a couple bucks. And because uh, the American dollar, one American dollar is like 40 baht back then anyways. So then like we basically bought like two bowls of noodles for like. Two three dollars, fucking fire, fresh ass noodles, broth is popping, everything's fucking bomb, and I'm gonna tell y'all all about how Chia shit herself right after this break. David, so hey man, let me ask you something: Is something ever preventing you from achieving your goals? Yes. Do you ever feel like you know something is interfering with your happiness? All the time. Well, you know what, my guy. You should check out BetterHelp if you just need a little help. First of all, I love BetterHelp. Mental health is the hot thing to do right now. I mean, I think it's important for today's day and age. We don't talk about it enough, and I'm glad people are beginning to talk about it. And that's why BetterHelp is lit, because it's not a crisis line. It's not just self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. And guess what else? You can just send a message to your counselor anytime. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. And you know what else? The service is available for clients worldwide wide my guy world wide and you've used it before you said i've actually have used it so better help for you guys out there too if you guys need financial aid as well they actually have stuff for people out there who are a little you know skinny on the budget and uh, a friend of mine who was actually using better help used the financial aid and he said it was super cheap and super affordable for him for what he needed so better help too like for those of you out there who might have like social anxiety too and maybe you don't want to see people face to face because as we all know there's even covid right now mm-hmm you can do it online. It makes something, it's very comfortable. It's in the comfort of your own home mm-hmm. and you can open up. And by the way, if you don't like the first <clears> counselor <throat> that you have, you can actually switch out your counselor to somebody that matches for you because not everything is a good fit the first time you try it. They got professionals, licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, anger, family conflicts, grief, self esteem, trauma, even sleeping, my guy. Did you just say David So right now? <laughs> <laughs> and just for y'all, we got a special treat, okay? I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener of us, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash foods, okay? Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods for 10% off your first month. Okay, so Chia has been to Thailand with me one time for sure, maybe twice. Uh, one time for sure, though. Okay, so I was out there performing at actually a, a YouTube fan fest in Thailand, and it was lit for me because this was my first time. 
performing in Thailand. And a lot of people didn't even know I was Thai. So I like went on stage and I was like, Oh, you did a performance in Thailand? Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of dope. Bro, it was so <clears throat> fucking dope. I was like in the newspaper, like big ass picture of me in the newspaper. Cause it was like, I'm Thai, you know? I was doing like, I did a couple of interviews and I got on stage and I was like kind of speaking Thai. I'm like, Hey, you know, like, so I decop. I was like, People don't know I'm Thai, but I'm actually Thai. And then they were like, They were going crazy. And, um, you know, I'm like speaking my broken tie, you know what I'm saying? But they were so just like, um, a lot, like some people were, were proud because they knew. Surprise. Yeah, it's, and the other people were like, oh shit, this is crazy, you yeah. know? Um, so I was out there for a show, Chia was with me, and <clears throat> of course, you know, we're going like doing all touristy shit, we're going to like the the like the like leaning, bo- the reclining Buddha and all like the, the popular temples, and we're doing the touristy shit, right? And there's all these carts outside, where they're selling the street meat. And I'm like, oh, babe, you got to get some street meat. It's fucking fire. And it always is. And um, so she had some. And, of course, I don't know if my stomach is just used to it. I was fine. But it definitely had her bubble guts in a little bit, you know. Oh, with the little amount of food she eats. I know. I know. So there was one night specifically, the night after the day when we went and had the street meat. There's a lounge downstairs of our hotel. And some of the other, like, uh, YouTubers and people that were there were like, Joel, let's just go down there and have a drink, right? So Chia puts on a little, little fucking dress. I think it was like a either dark green or a black dress. I remember she was looking nice, right? And we go down the elevator from our hotel room to downstairs lounge. And as soon as the doors open up, Chia's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm about to shit myself. <laughs> she's like, I got to go back. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. She gets down to the elevator. She's like, I have to go. She goes right back up to the room. And I'm like, all right, babe, I'll just meet you back down here. She's like, okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> she was like, and then she comes back down. She's like, oh, my God, that was like, dumb and dumber scene like shit where like fucking you know where harry uh is it harry yeah harry gets the eye drops yeah explosive diarrhea yes bro like that she was like oh my god i was so close to not even making it it was like that dog and then she came back down she was fine we got her some meds you know and here's the funny shit that week since I was in Thailand, I hit up, you know, my family. Majority of my family's in Thailand, all my aunties, uncles, cousins. And um, we were having, we went to like a dinner in Bangkok. And um, one of my aunts is a, um, she's like one of the higher ups at this hospital, actually. Mm. And so <laughs> we're sitting at the table and this aunt just happened to be next to Chia. She leans over. This is the first time Chia ever met this aunt. She leans over. She's like, do you still have diarrhea? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm fine now. Thank you. <laughs> That's so fucking funny, dude. But you know, Asian people don't give a fuck. Yeah. So when um, Joe and his girlfriend came over to my place, mm. right? Um, they they were uh, doing a road trip all the way through California. Mm. Um, my mom's very hospitable. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of your mom, actually. Mm. So we have a lot of similarities. So my mom was making this huge spread of Korean food, whatever, mm. and grubbing. And then uh, Joe was like, "Oh, can I use your your?" Uh, uh, washing machine so I could wash my clothes. Yeah. Mom's like, I'm going to do it. So she just started washing Joe's clothes. Because, oh. right? you know, whatever. It's like, my friends are like her children. And mm-hmm. so this woman, so funny, starts <laughs> washing the clothes or whatever, right? And then also, Joe's girlfriend's clothes are in there too, right? And then she sees her underwear. And, and, she, yeah. and she goes, so tiny! <laughs> <laughs> and she starts dancing with it. Oh my God! <laughs> 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 Joe's girlfriend's like the coolest girl ever. She's just cracking up. She thinks it's so funny, but mom's like, oh. <laughs> wow. No, she's so fucking funny, dude. I'm like, why'd you do that, you fucking psychopath? That is adorable. Wait, your mom was uh, uh, in town recently? Uh, no, this is when they uh, drove. They they went to Sacramento because they did oh, a road trip. Oh, yeah. I see. And I was there to visit family, so I was like, hey, why don't you guys stop by, and then we'll go do Sacramento shit. That's tight. Yeah. You should stop by for dinner again sometime, bro. Bro, I would fucking love to. You know what my mom makes that's so bomb? I always forget to like request it. She makes a fire Thai style oxtail soup. It's like an oxtail Ooh. stew. And there's like tomatoes in it and borados. Borados. Yeah, and it's fucking bomb. It makes you do this. You take a bite and you go, it's like that. <laughs> fucking lip smackety good, dog. I was I was telling you about this, but if you guys don't watch this shit, it's probably one of the funnest things you'll ever see. You'll, <laughs> it's just a bunch of moms rating each other's foods on, on the internet. Mm. So BuzzFeed originally started it, and then a bunch of other channels just developed their whole channel off of this shit, mm-hmm. where it'll be like Italian moms try... Uh, eat, eat uh, their uh, lasagna, right, right, each right. other's lasagna, 
and I've never seen a bunch of fucking haters just in one <laughs> area just hating for no fucking reason. Which which moms were they hating as moms? <clears throat> I'll tell you this though, if you guys watch it, it's always African or black moms that mm. are so harsh on each other. Mm. They're the worst. They really? just fucking wreck that I, I thought it was gonna be Italian moms. Mm -hmm. Like it was gonna be the worst, but something about like they're just so competitive because they want their shit to be the best, which is actually kind of dope. You know what? I think I think in terms of uh, like older generations, I think as far as like Asian culture and Black culture, I think that's something that's super similar. Where haters, haters, yep. of other people's recipes, because y'all know I've told this story before. My mom is the hardest to please in terms of like cooking you know what i'm saying because her shit's always on point so like i said man whenever my mom doesn't eat at a thai food restaurant or any restaurant she doesn't like you see it on her face immediately she's mm. oh. <laughs> uh, she'll sit there we'll be eating somewhere i'll take her somewhere so to eat. unnecessary i'll be like mom mom uh, let me let me come try this restaurant right and i'll look over and she's just Mm. All the time And my dad gets pissed He's like come on yeah. Just give it a chance Or whatever But it's like She's just the most Difficult person to please And um That's why I was actually I was so happy When um When Chia's dad Made the injera mm -hmm. for, Like for all of us And my parents came over My mom was like Oh this is really good And I was like Oh thank god I think Cause <laughs> I was about to start Some shit dude Bro speaking of those videos There was a video I came across A similar themed videos recently it was tribal people trying <gasps> american food trying american food how dope is have that you seen shit, those dude and there was one it was cheesecake i think right and there was this older dude and i don't know which like area of the world this like tribe is from but um this guy he's like and they're you know he's he's talking and he has this cheesecake and everyone's kind of surprised they're like oh it's cold oh this is interesting and of course it's all like you know it's all like yeah uh you know subtitles and this one guy's like he, he takes a bite he kind of like lets it like marinate in his mouth. He's chewing and he's like, oh, I want to kiss the hands of the person that, yeah. that made this. It's just mind The way they blown. describe things. There's one guy I know that he looks up every adjective for positive words <laughs> when he likes something because he'll just sit there for like five minutes. Super. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> delicious. Best. Amazing. Universal, <laughs> like you'll just go off about how good it is. Yeah. One of the episodes that I really, really liked, and I think so there's something about like either the way they're translating or how they're saying it that just sounds so fucking fire. Yeah. And they were, t and it was when they had them try soul food, right? Mm. And the guy was basically breaking down. He goes, you know, it's it's pretty cool to see this this culture that creates this food out of scraps, out of nothing. When they were enslaved people in this country, they took what they could and they make this delicacy that mm. everybody craves, and like that is the beauty of like. Like black culture. Damn, that's how like, he explained that's it. That's how he explained wow, it. I just got the chills. Yeah, I was like, that shit's fucking beautiful, bro. <laughs> but uh, it's probably something like culturally they can relate to, of like kind of taking your lemons and you know turning into lemonade. Yeah. And the, the way that he kind of like put that perspective and spin on that type of food, because if you know like like soul food, right? A lot of the stuff that we like, especially when it comes to like smoked meats, like let's say for example a brisket, right? Mm -hmm. A brisket typically is a tough ass piece of beef mm -mm -mm. there's a reason why you have to smoke it and cook it for such a long time because all that you know intramuscular fat <laughs> right all that you know that, that, that this, whatever the fucking the muscle fibers need to be cooked for a long time so it's nice and relaxed and it's juicy well these were all like throwaway foods like for mm -hmm. example chicken wings chicken mm -hmm. wings were fucking throwaway food right right i mean it's just a little, little tiny piece of meat yeah people just throw that shit away mm -hmm. and then somebody along the lines was like you know what the fuck is you doing mm -hmm. but there was like that's like the whole concept of like what soul food is too. It's like it's it's pretty crazy how all the stuff like it was like throwaway food, and now everybody craves it. It's like, it has such a high price to it. Mm -hmm. Gentrification. Gentrification. You know what? <laughs> hey, come at me. I don't give a fuck. I hate Southern mac and cheese. You hate Southern mac and cheese? I hate Southern mac and cheese with everything that I have. Why? I think because it's a casserole. They it's baked, and then after it cools down a little bit, it becomes clumped. Yeah. And the, and whenever you whenever you're <laughs> served it, it's just this cake. I don't like it. I want the gooey. Oh, you want it all out throughout the noodles and shit. Exactly. And so, like southern mac and cheese, like I've made it a few times. Okay, I'm I'm being a little hyperbolic. I don't hate it. <laughs> right. It's not my preferred mac and cheese. Right. Yeah. So they'll use uh, uh not condensed milk, but evaporated milk. 
um, eggs, and that's the that's the casserole part. That is the binder that they use to mm-hmm. make it into a casserole. And I don't like the binding part of it. I like it to just string up and then. Eat. Man, I fuck with it, dog. I like that it's like a cake with like the burnt edges and stuff. But you could have that, and it could also be goopy and cheesy. Mm. And it's only like that with southern mac and cheese when it's fresh out the oven. Mm, I'm actually drooling right now at your uh, explanation <laughs> of the southern mac and cheese. I like the part with those little dookie flex on. It. <laughs> you know what I do. With the southern mac and cheese that not everyone does, um, I add a little barbecue sauce to it. Barbecue oh. sauce on, you know what the best barbecue sauce is by the way the mm-hmm. bottles. Which was your favorite? What is the question? Favorite What's my my favorite brand? Bottled. Um, I always go for the um, uh, what is it? Uh, Sweet Baby Ray's. Yes, yes. My, the original flavor, Sweet Baby Ray's. Mm-hmm. I used to make my own barbecue sauce whenever I, like, you know, or smoke some shit. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. I just get Sweet Baby Ray's. I think it's way better than the shit that I make. I love it. It's the best. Yeah. It's so fucking good. And I try the, um, you know, they get, and then now they got all the different, you know, they got the spicy one and they got mm-hmm. like the different, different shit. That one spot when we were on, um, when <laughs> we were doing the, 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 the send foods with the guests. It was that barbecue sauce. What what joint was that? And they had the hot the hot mustard barbecue yes, sauce. Yes, they, they they tagged us on IG too because we were talking about it. Um, uh, I forgot what it was called. Sorry guys, but it was it was it was the, the mustard sauce was popping. It was so it was so good. I took it home and I was eating that for months. It was the episode where we interviewed Bachelorette Girl. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. Everybody's like, "Oh, David has a crush on her." It wasn't even that. I'll be honest. I fucking hated the format of that show. I did not want to be there. Yeah, they. so everyone thought that like David was being so awkward because she was like a pretty girl. I was annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that, when 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 Thrillis had us do Send Foods interviewing guests, it was definitely like an awkward, we weren't really sure how to do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? We didn't know what to do. Because I told them, I was like, I don't want us to be interviewing people. Yes. Because Send Foods is about me and David, okay? And our love of food. And so when they brought in guests, I was like, I was like, yo, is this going to be an interview? She's like, no, no, don't interview. Just, you know, they're going to bring in their food and like, you know, you guys are just going to be enjoying the food. I'm like, all right, man. But but then you get this, this, this like, what is this? You exactly. know, what are we supposed to be talking about? Because now we have this guest here we know nothing about. They're just showing us their food, but it's like, and I don't want to interview, but I feel like I should interview you. So it's all just kind of weird. I just didn't know what the point of the show was, yeah. you know, at that point. And mind you, this is just because, you know, COVID made things really weird. Yeah. And so, you know, there was a shift that we had to do on the show. Mm-hmm. But- Everybody was like, you have a crush on her. I'm like, I was so annoyed. <laughs> Not of her. She was fine. Yeah, she was great. I just didn't know what the fuck to do. I was yeah. just like, okay, well, what the fuck are we doing here? You yeah. know what I mean? And so, it, you know, it got to later on, we started, we had to figure out the vibe and the flow. Mm-hmm. So if you saw in the later episodes, it got a little... And, and by the way, too, it's not like every guest that comes on, just because you like food doesn't mean you could talk about food or you know about it. Right. So it's different, right? Mm-hmm. And so they would come on and they'd be like, oh, this is some food that I eat. Kill. Cool. Yeah, and we're like fucking pulling for sh- like whatever we can get. Yeah. yeah, and like some of the guests that came on, like, yeah, they liked <laughs> food, but, you know, like my boy Matt, uh, Nate Shot, you know, uh, he was he was coming on, he's like... <laughs> he was I love like, that guy, by the way. He was like, yo... <clears throat> Um, I don't, he, he was from Chicago and he's like the Chicago dog. He's like, yeah, like the, it's good, but I don't eat it with this. I don't eat it with that. I've never had, what did he say? He has so many shit, so much shit. He's like, I've never tried this and I, I will never try this. Yeah. I was like, come on, bro. Give it a go. What did he say? He's like, he's never had, um, it was a bunch of shit. Salt. Dog. <laughs> no, but that dude, you know why I liked about him the most though? Is the fact that he's very honest though. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't have to, he wasn't pretending about what he likes or what mm-hmm. he enjoys. He wasn't doing any of this shit. He goes, this shit is fucking fire. And honestly, out of all the guests, I think he had some of the best food that he brought on. He just brought like, look, I love this burger and it was a oh, fire burger. The cheesecake that he brought was bum- so oh, fucking so bum. good. You didn't like his Panera that he brought, but. Was that Panera with the he brought? Oh no, that was Marlon Webb. The, oh, the mac and cheese. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Marlon Webb, shout outs to Marlon Webb for having the most disgusting palate I've ever <laughs> I've ever known in my life. That's fucking hilarious, by the way. He made some of the funniest content I've ever seen. But literally chop off your tongue. That he so he I've never had Panera bread mac and cheese before, right? Yeah. But this is something that he craves. Now, I understand there's a nostalgia effect with food, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck. And I was like, I literally said, I think on the show, it tastes like somebody squeezes this out of a bag. Mm. And then somebody from Panera was like, 
<laughs> it is from a bag. Yeah, like, yeah. You actually squeeze it out. And that's exactly what it tasted like. I don't even have like a refined palate, but it tasted like plastic. I mean, you know, the thing I try to tell people, you know, that are coming up, I'm like, hey, man, you're getting some money now. <laughs> Spend a little bit of that. Spend just a little bit of it on some. Do better on some trying some different food, and I promise you, it's gonna it's gonna blow your mind. You know what's interesting too? Like I remember I told him like, the thing that I remember about him the most that I thought was so obscure, and I don't know why it cracks me up the most, mm-hmm. is when he used to put this watermelon on his head, <laughs> and he pronounced it watermelon. Watermelon. And yeah. And it used to crack me, and I couldn't figure out why. This was so fucking funny to me. But then you mentioned that to him, and he's like, it's actually one of my most hated. I hate that fucking shit. <laughs> but it, it always happens, too. Like, the, sometimes the stuff that you don't like is the stuff that people like the most. I know. And that's his thing. Like, he didn't like the watermelon thing. He was like, it's fucking whatever. Was there any food that you loved as a child that you hate now or a food that you hated as a child that you love now? That is a very good question. I have to think on that. I'm pretty sure there is something. I'll tell you what. For me, while you think, when I was little, I couldn't stand tomatoes or onions I if, if they were in my food and my mom was making me eat it like she was like just eat the tomato I would have to like I would bite it I'll go <laughs> and swallow like that I hated it so much tomato tomato but now yeah put some tomatoes and some onions in my sandwich and my burger I love it oh I love that shit yeah I actually don't know I think I pretty m- I'm a fat guy so I pretty <laughs> much ate everything but the thing I don't like mm. Is this? I don't like um very too beefy tasting soups. Interesting. If it's too beefy, like if it tastes too much like the marrow and the bones, mm. I don't like it. I think it is weird. Really? I don't know, but it's, I'll tell you the story after we come back from a break. Hey guys, this episode of Dudes Behind the Foods is brought to you by GoodyBrand.com. Tim here, just popping in to remind you that what's a better Christmas gift than some fly-ass clothes? I mean, goodybrand.com, we got new hats. Uh, Count your blessings. We got beanies. We got new flannels. We got all types of new gear. So go to goodybrand.com and check it out. So, when I was a kid, there was a soup that a lot of Korean people know. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a phrase that I feel like a lot of uh, Asian parents say to you. It's when you don't like something that they think is great, they go, you don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> they love saying that. She goes, uh, the sang bonji do bolla. So she goes, you don't even know what expensive shit is. So she's basically saying I have like the taste of a peasant. That's so funny. Before you continue, quick side tangent. Because mm-hmm. I, never even reali- I never even realized this until you said it. But when Thai people say... Like if you don't like a food in in like Thai in like in Thai, mm-hmm. they don't say, Oh, he doesn't like the food. They'll say, Tan my pen, which means you don't know how to eat it. And how annoying is that <laughs> shit, Doug? I'm so <laughs> what is that? It's like, oh, you're an idiot. That's basically what you're fucking telling yeah, me. Yeah. It's like, so she would make this this dish is called komtang. Komtang is a basically a beef marrow soup. Okay. A lot of people like this. It's like a hearty, thick, rich, and it's supposed to be good for you because it's high in calories, mm. a lot of fat, and it's like something that you eat during the winter or when you're sick. Mm. So my mom would make this fat, fucking boiling pot of komtang mm. every fucking winter, mm-hmm. right? Just bone, like beef marrow in it. And there's also tendon. There's mm. tripe inside that shit. Wherever the fuck that you want, right? Mm. Everything I hate. Mm. Tendon and tripe. Disgusting. My brother loves that shit. Sounds amazing. And then you, it's it's <laughs> unseasoned. So what oh. you would do is that you season it how to your liking. Ah. So you get a mixture of salt and pepper mm. into this little bowl. You throw it however much you want. Then you get something called puchu. Puchu is like uh, uh, garlic shoots, okay. right? You could throw that in there. You could throw some kimchi in there, mix it into the soup, Mm -hmm. eat it to your liking. I fucking hate it. Interesting. So my mom would make the biggest pot you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like lunch lady pot size of it. (laughs) She would serve this bowl up. And every fucking year since I was a kid, I'm like, mom, you know I hate this. She goes, just try it. Yeah. Put it in my mouth and I would throw up. Really? Next year, makes a big (laughs) pot again. I am now eight years old. Try this. I don't like this. You eat this or I'll beat your ass. <laughs> eat it. I throw up. Yeah. She goes, you don't know what good food is. <laughs> I am now nine years old. Big pot. 
Let's try this again. Have you not learned? Yeah. I can't eat this. Eat this or I'll beat your ass. Eat it, throw it up. You don't know what good food is. And even today as a grown-ass man, you don't fuck with it? So I finally, at like, I think I was like 20, mm -hmm. she stopped making it for me. Mm. And I just had enough. I was like, no more! Yeah. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I fucking hate this soup. Yeah. She's like, geez, you should have just told me. <laughs> why don't you say something? <laughs> as I fucking threw up in front of her. And I don't know why. It's just so beefy. And as a kid, I didn't eat a lot of beef. Mm, that's so right. So beef tasting things fucking grossed me out. Yeah. I, I did not like it. So, I mean, I'll eat it now mm. and it doesn't make me yak. Yeah. But it's not my favorite. I think it's because of the memory part of it. But it's it's very rich. It's de it's delicious. Well, tell your mom I'm coming over and to make a big cafeteria sized lady pot for me. Oh, you'll love it, you fucking <laughs> Dorito chip eating bastard. <laughs> so, well, do you fuck with Thai boat noodles though? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thai boat noodles are one of my favorite noodle soups of all time. Top three. Because boat noodles is pretty meaty, bro. Take out the tripe for me though. Okay. I'll eat the liver. Yeah. And I'll eat all the other stuff. But the tripe, I can't do it. Okay. But the tamarind kind of cuts all that beef. Ah, uh, it's almost a kind of sweetness to it. Sweetness, mm. a little sourness to yeah, it. So yeah, it, yeah. it just adds this level of just, you know, choix de vie. Mm. So boat noodles, when I first had it, I didn't like it as much only because the restaurant that I went to wasn't very good. Mm. And it was just this weird. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. It wasn't like either salty enough or there wasn't like that shit. And then I had it at this place called Pot Ord Noodle. Okay. And I had boat noodles there. Fucking sent me to the moon. Boat noodles, bro, so <clears throat> slept on in the noodle conversation. Better than Tom Ka, Tom Yum. Mm -hmm. Boat noodle is is so much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if, if y'all don't know, uh Thai boat noodles, it is a um it's a pretty hearty soup. It's like noodles, it's like a dark broth, which is different from any other Thai soup, really. Um It looks like blood sausage color. Yeah, it's like it's like <clears throat> dark brown, you know what I'm saying? And it's like beef and beef meatballs and sometimes liver and tripe and um you know it's a little spicy a little sweet and um usually you know we'll throw a little you know i like to throw a little vinegar in there a little red a uh, little hot sauce as well and uh man that shit right there it's so like especially on a cold day get that shit nice and hot so like just like filling and just makes you like mm -hmm, you know you know the first time i ever had thai level spice <laughs> was in North Hollywood. Mm. If you ever come to LA, you want like good Thai food and you don't know where to go, just go to North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It's Thai Town. Thai Town. And it's one of the best like Thai food experiences I've ever had. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never been to Thailand, but you know, homies who have been to Thailand, they said this is pretty close to it. It's pretty fucking good. Thai you Town know? has some fire spots. <clears throat> yeah, there's like some interesting things that you can eat there. So I think a lot of the times when we explore food, we only go for the stuff that you typically see, mm -hmm. but that's usually not a representation of the whole cuisine. Yeah. Right? Like, one of my favorite things I've ever had in my life is the Thai fermented sausage. Oh, really? With the little sliver of garlic on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, where it's almost kind of like raw looking. It's it's so fucking good. It's, it's a little sour. Mm -hmm. It's a little sour. It's a little spicy. That's called nam. If you ever want to ask for that in a Thai oh, food restaurant, it's it's so and you raw piece of garlic and a raw piece of ginger with mm -hmm. it. So fucking good. So it's interesting, right? You you bring it out and it looks like a fucking raw sausage. It's called nam, and um, they'll bring out they'll put little peanuts, little chili, little garlic, little yeah. raw things, and you kind of just kind of, if you want, you can grab like a lettuce cup, eat it like a little lettuce wrap. Um, but yeah, it's like a little appetizer finger food, and uh, yeah, it's it's not a lot of people order that. So yeah, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I I just ordered it one time. I'm like. Thai people have sausage? I didn't fucking know this mm -hmm. shit, you know? And I thought it was going to be like meatballs or whatever. Came out, and I had no idea how to eat it. So, I, you know, me having like social anxiety and shit, <laughs> I just sat. <laughs> I waited. <laughs> waited, and then this lady came over. She goes, you don't know what I eat that day. And I was like, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> she goes, okay, you could, you know, wrap it or just eat the sausage with some garlic. Mm -hmm. You don't have it. There's no real way to eat it. Everybody eats it different. Yeah. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I said, cop, coon, cop. Uh, cop, coon, cop. <laughs> <laughs> thai people also do a Thai sausage that's cooked almost like on some like street meat shit. It's called um side gawk, all right? It's like a stuffed sausage. Sidecock. Side side cock. Yeah. It's called side gawk with um it's like stuffed with rice and noodles sometimes. And I remember being in Thailand, bro, as a little kid, and I loved it. I was like four years old, I loved it. And then we came back from Thailand, we we're in America, and I was like, Mom, I really want to eat that thing. It's like it's like meat 
and it's like on a stick and there's like noodles on the inside and I couldn't think of what it was called and I was and I kept calling it Sai Bog instead of Sai Gog and my mom could not figure out what I was talking about and we were both getting so frustrated and I'm like Sai Bog Sai Bog it's the meat with the noodles on the inside on the stick and she's like what are you talking about so finally I drew a fucking picture and my parents are like oh Sai Gog I'm like dude I'm off by one letter and and for years, just try, dog. <laughs> for years, they would be like, they would they would make jokes about like, oh, Tim kept calling it cyborg, and we couldn't figure it out. I'm like, guys, and finally I was one old, letter. I was old enough to make an argument, and I was like, guys, if you told me there is this meat that's in bread and it's called a hot bog, I would <laughs> I would figure it out. What was the issue? <laughs> you. <laughs> fucking assholes, all right? <laughs> Holy shit, you take the B, you mirror flip it, it's a D. <laughs> <sighs> they're like, they're looking at me like, what are you talking about? What is a cyborg? Yeah, this, this, is, this is not my story, but a friend of mine <laughs> told me this story where <laughs> he witnessed his mom and his and like his best friend get into an argument over yeah. a snack because his mom wanted to give them a snack, but she kept saying this random word and mm. they didn't know what the fuck it was. Mm. And she goes, Oh oh oh! So you 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 friend the one to todori? <laughs> and then he was like, "Mom, what's todori?" Yeah. She goes, "Todori, you eat todori every, every day. It's a todori." He's like, "What the? F- I don't have todori." <laughs> St- you don't know to- todori, todori, todori! <laughs> and she's getting mad. She's screaming, "Todori!" <laughs> and she goes, "What? What? What?" And she runs into the kitchen. She grabs a bag of chips. Todori! He goes, "Mom, those are Doritos." Oh. <laughs> she's like. <laughs> and they're screaming at Aww. each other. Totori's like one of the funniest fucking things I've ever heard in my That's life. That's hilarious. Um, my boy Benji, when he first, when he first moved to LA, um, you know, because I was I would always take him to taco spots whenever he's in LA, right? So one day I'm like, yeah, well, how you feeling? You want to get some tacos today? He's like, yeah. He's like, man, I, I, I would love also like that one. Well, that charmada, that charmada drink, and I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, you know, charmada. I'm like, he's like that white drink. I'm like, horchata. Love <laughs> dude. My, my brother told me the story where um, his friend, you know, who, you know, kind of says he knows food very well. Uh-huh. And this fool got so mad at him because he was hyping up my brother about the sandwich spot that he knows, right? He's like, yo, this is a local spot. A lot of people don't really go to this joint, but they actually make some fire sandwiches, and they like they have fast service like subway does Mm. he goes dude this spot is fucking dope and like it's because it's quick they call this this joint call he goes there he goes yo this is a spot he goes a spot called to goes (laughs) (laughs) and he goes it was fucking togos yeah and he hyped him up for like a week because it was (laughs) like brother (laughs) fucking blew up on him he goes fucking togos bro it's a chain but that's the funny thing this guy talks about himself like he knows food Mm. you know but it was a fucking fast food spot it's like get the fuck out of here with that shit some people do fucking todori guys dude todori that's adorable i know it's only adorable when they're not screaming at each other. Well, Koreans are always screaming at each other, though. That's how we communicate, dude. Yeah. My, my parents, <laughs> dude, the way, when I look back at how me and my parents used to fight, it's om- like any white person would have called like CPS immediately. <laughs> po- the, the Korean people are so fucking mad. So, you know, I don't go back home as often. But, you know, when you, I was walking around the house, I'm like, oh, I punched the hole there. I punched the hole there. My dad ripped the the door off of here. <laughs> this is where my mom threw a rice cooker at my dad's head. Oh my god! Um, this right here is where my dad punched the cabinet door open. Um, <laughs> I ki- I kicked the hole in this wall over here. We we were so fucking violent. Yeah, my dad um, made sure I didn't even. Whenever I showed any hint of doing that, he would his face was like, "Don't ever do that." I think one time I got frustrated and I like kick some rocks he's like hey don't do anything like that ever again <laughs> it's like oh okay i'll find a different we way don't to show <laughs> emotions in this family <laughs> he's like I'll, I'll i'll say i'll learn to verbalize dad i'll learn i'll learn to communicate my, my family dude we just started breaking things in the house <laughs> it's like you know what the soup was cold <laughs> we get fights dude um well i want to come over for dinner sometime because it sounds fun i want the beef i want the fight um, <laughs> they don't. We don't fight anymore. <laughs> it's been a long time since we actually had a fight or an argument. It's been a very long time. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's like I feel like you you don't really start to get along with your family until like <laughs> you're grown. <laughs> I know. You know what my dad said? He just we almost, 
like the last time we almost got into a fight after we had a huge fight was probably like six or seven years ago. Yeah. And then we almost got into another one. My dad looked at me. He goes, I'm old. <laughs> I got time I for got this shit. 20 years left, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing it fighting. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> he just went to his room, went on his computer, and just started watching Korean videos. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even mad. He was just, I'm old. I'm going to die soon. I'm over it. I'm not doing this shit. And, and honestly, it was his fault. <laughs> but he was just like, didn't want to apologize, but his way of saying was like, I'm just going to not argue. Yeah, I guess that is kind of like, it's like, you know what? It's not worth it. Exactly. I'm good. He we used to fight about some of the dumbest shit, dude. And I told the story on my podcast where I remember I actually have a, a voice recorder, a recording of this. I'm mm. trying to find it where I recorded how stupid he was being towards me. <laughs> we were painting my room, right? Mm. He was like, hey, let's let's do a refresh. You can paint your room whatever you want. He was trying to be nice. Mm. And I go, okay, cool. I want blue and I want white trim. And my dad goes, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Just off the jump. As a kid, that's going to piss you off. I'm uh-huh. like, why? He goes, that doesn't make any sense. Okay. And I'm like, why doesn't that make any sense? He goes, because <laughs> blue is a heavy and it's a white is a light. <laughs> you can't put a heavy color on a something light. <laughs> you see, you put a book on a cardboard box. <laughs> what happened? It, it, <laughs> It's going to break. I'm like, what (laughs) are you fucking talking about? (laughs) So I was like, then why did you ask my opinion (laughs) about what I wanted? He goes, your opinion's wrong. And I'm like, uh, I was like, opinions can't be wrong because it's my opinion. You asked me. He goes, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He's like, I thought my son would be smarter than (laughs) that. (laughs) So what he did, if you go to my room back at home now, it's yeah. literally this cream colored wall and, and turquoise trim, the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. And he forced me to have it. Wow. Cause I did, I didn't want that. I wanted a navy blue wall yeah. and white trim. And he wouldn't give it to me because he said it was stupid. And I recorded huh. that conversation. And it's just me and him yelling at each other. He <laughs> goes, these are heavy. <laughs> white is a lie. Oh man. Arguing with your parents, was your Korean good? It's a lot better now than it was then. Yeah. I mean, arguing with my mom growing up was some of the most difficult because my Thai isn't great and her English isn't great. So we kind of like are arguing each other in our broken, like, you know, trying to figure out how to make it work. Right. And I remember sometimes when I was younger getting so frustrated that I'm like, I'm just going to exaggerate so she understands that I'm pissed. And I would say shit like, everything in the world that I like, you hate. <laughs> 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 And then that would just make my mom just shut down. She'd be like, oh, okay, well then, I'm never going to talk to you ever again. Of course, that's their response. <laughs> Listen, you know, before we end this podcast, this is one of the funniest <laughs> things. This is, okay, I always say this too, just to give people a preference. Like, this is not my life and I wouldn't do this. This is funny, but it's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> so a, a friend of mine was going through a lot of shit. And I think that a lot of like Asian cultures, like the idea of mental health isn't something that they give a fuck about. Right. So, like, this will tell me the story, which was so terrible, but it's funny at the same time because of how Asian this shit is. Mm-hmm. So, my friend tells his mom, like, hey, I'm depressed. Mm-hmm. Like, I've had thoughts about killing myself. Right. Right? And then his mom, in the most Korean fashion ever, goes, whatever. <laughs> No, this gets worse. This is pissed. He's like, Mom, I want to kill myself. This is how serious this, right? She walks away to go pick up a phone call, right? It's his cousin. Yeah. Right? And his cousin goes, Yo, so how's he doing, right? He goes, He just told me he wanted to kill himself. <laughs> and she starts busting up laughing as he's in the other room. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, he says he's depressed. <laughs> Like in Korea, kind of like, oh, he's depressed. Oh my God. Well, he can laugh about it now, but when he told, I was like cracking the fuck up. That's so funny. <laughs> Whatever. I I had no idea that um, Koreans went in like that until you know, like I said, I've I've dated a Korean girl when I was a freshman in high school, Tina Park. Shout out to Tina Park, and she would tell me stories like that, where she would be like, I was crying to my mom. I told my mom that she hurt my feelings, and my mom said, You don't have feelings. You're- <laughs> You're a kid. What do you mean? <laughs> what feelings? <laughs> yeah, what how she's doing now, huh? <laughs> oh my god. Nah, Korean people are some of the fucking worst. My mom once so I got when I first got dumped, I was eighteen years old and I wasn't <laughs> close to my dad, so I told my mom, listen, 
do not tell dad that I got dumped. And <laughs> I went to my room and I started crying. I was yeah. bawling, right? And I'm like 18 years old. And I was like devastated. Yeah. <laughs> my mom just opens the door, comes in. She sits on my bed just like a white sitcom. Puts my head, what happened? She told me, she goes, only pussies cry in their room alone. Damn. <laughs> and then I looked at her, I started crying more. And then she just walked out and closed the door. Oh, wow. And then I hear my mom. She goes, this guy's crying in the room. <laughs> Telling my dad. And then I just told her, don't fucking tell him. And I go, Mom, why the fuck did you tell him? He goes, you're crying like a little bitch. What do you want? Me. The worst mother on earth, but, but I love her. But you, And you learned to man up. Mm-hmm. And I never cry anymore. <laughs> Even when it hurts. So much, <laughs> I hold it all inside. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, that's that's beautiful, David. So, um, well, hey, man. Um, cheers to us being able to grow and and laugh at that now. I don't need therapy. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I I actually have therapy right now. The key Great. is to being able to recognize how we couldn't communicate back in the day, and you know. Opening up nowadays, man. Figuring it out. That's you know? right. Asian kids, try some therapy. It's great. It, it helps you out. It helps. And uh, and this is my therapy. Talking to you, David. So Good, Tim. And I hope you guys were able to listen and enjoy this episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. Um, I don't know when this is going to come out. I was going to say Happy New Year, but I don't know exactly when this is going to come out, but... Happy New Year, either way. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Tim Chantharangsu. And I'm David So. Make sure you uh, rate this five stars on iTunes, podcasts, and Spotify, wherever you're listening to this. It really helps. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) 